we took a skier from around that 90 mark, 89, and we got her up to a 116. This can happen to you if you try out these exercises. My name is Morgan. I come from Alberta, Canada. I'm a CSI certified level four ski instructor. I have 27 years of ski teaching experience and 40 years of ski experience. Today, we're looking to boost you from a 90 to 100 range and above. The interesting thing about today's lesson is we worked with an actual skier and she improved her metrics within a very short amount of time. Believe it or not, it was within five runs. If you try these exercises, you will move from a smooth operator to a parallel perfecter in no time. Have a watch of the lesson, tune in, and let's get at it. Some of the common things that we see in skiers of 90 to 100 IQ range is a lack of mobility in their joints, a rushing of the turn, and leaning up the hill at the end of the turn. Because I have access to all my joints, watch here, I can twist my leg very easily. If I'm tall, I can't. The whole body becomes involved in that process. So with skiers between 90 and 100, typically what we see is a turn shape is quite pinched, it's called. So our skis do way more of this and not enough of this. Another common action that we see with skiers out there is that at the bottom of the turn, they try to get away from the bottom of the slope and they lean. By leaning, I actually have all my balance on my uphill leg. This ski can now just float around and that hinders our ability to balance on that outside ski, creating that good grip at the end of the turn that we all require. If you do these exercise, you will get better balance, better pressure, and at the end of the day, you will feel more confident on the slopes. So we're here with Rachel today. Uh, she's a skier about 90 to 100. And what we wanna try and do is we wanna have a nice round rhythmical turn. Try and keep it about two to two and a half groomer tracks wide. And think to yourself that my whole thought is to make my turns as round as possible, okay? So down here, and the speed-wise, just go what you're comfortable with. Awesome, so we got a baseline now of Rachel, which is about that 89 IQ. Uh, what I started to notice is that she needs to encourage a little bit more mobility in her joints. And by doing that, she should get a, a bit of a knock-on effect of balance, edging, and maybe a bit of pressure control as well. So the first drill that we're doing today, it's called a hop turn. That hop turn happens just at the beginning of the turn. And what we're going to do is, if this is the turn here, we're gonna hop right there, and we're gonna land very softly. The one thing that this drill is gonna really help with is your balance metric because you'll have greater access to the fore and aft movement of your body rather than a lean back or a lean forward i can do subtle movements with my joints what we want to try and do is bend and we're going to extend or push off the ground very quickly to get the hop by doing that that's going to allow you to recenter over top of your feet and to encourage all the joints moving what i noticed with rachel is she landed very hard and her joints were static and she tried to brace the landing. Then I encouraged her to land a bit softer and by landing softer, that allowed all of her joints to bend more appropriately to manage the forces of the turn. Start out with a very gentle green train. Maybe give yourself a little bit wider slope to try it on. You guys come with me with this drill and I'll explain to you as I do it. So I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna finish the turn and we're gonna give a hop, land and turn. Hop, land and turn. Hop, land and turn. See how my hip stays bent. Watch what happens when I do this by extending the hip. 
and when I extend the hip, just the tails of the ski come off the ground. We want to make sure that the whole ski comes up. The whole ski comes off the ground. Right at the start. Right at the start. What I noticed actually in Rachel's skiing is at the top of the turn, she was a lot more able to turn with her legs and she was able to get a nice rounder turn shape than before. Because she had access to her joints by bending at that hip so she could give that hop, what that provided her is the ability to, to start to develop a little bit of outside ski pressure. And that's what was one of the, the main things that I saw increase in those metrics. So once you start to get the sensation of being able to hop with your skis leaving the ground at equal amounts, you're gonna to wanna to start to blend it back into your own skiing. To do that, a quick and easy way to do it is start off by doing one or two turns, still hopping, then ski, feel like you're gonna hop, but don't actually leave the ground. Let's see what that looks like. So as I come down here, so let's try this. So I'm going to give a hop, hop, now I'm gonna try and feel like I'm hopping. Feel like I'm hopping. Feel like I'm hopping. All right, so by doing that exercise, what we actually achieved was a slight increase in pressure as well as the balance metric. And what that's allowing you to do now is to become more agile and mobile as you ski down. This next exercise is called a delay turn. What this is gonna help you increase is your pressure and your edge metric. When we're doing the delay turn at slower speeds, what we're gonna try and do is increase the pressure metric by slowing down the top of the turn. And then as we increase the speed, because we're moving faster and you're balancing a little bit more effectively on that outside ski with the pressure metric, your edge angles are gonna to start to increase as well. If you have a look at the terrain here, this is the perfect terrain to practice this on. It's nice and gentle, green, nice and wide. The delay turn, have a look here on the snow. As I do the turn, from this point as you want to start the turn till about here, you're just gonna kind of relax and let your skis take over. What I like to do is count like to a thousand. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, and then turn. Let's see what that looks like in action. Here we go. So we're going to go, let's get into a turn right here. So it's going to go one, 1,000, two, 1,000, turn. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, turn. What this is doing is elongating the amount of time that you're spending in the fall line. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, turn. One, 1,000, two. And as you do this, you're gonna find that you're gonna probably pick up a little bit of speed, that's okay. As you come around the bottom of the turn, that's what's gonna help manage your speed. So when we look at Rachel's metrics, we really can see that the balance metric is really high for her. Uh, as well as the pressure metric, that's she's much more balanced on the outside ski as a result. Since we're doing this on a more of a gentle slope, what you're probably noticing is that the edge angle score, the metric, is quite low. That's okay. To wrap this up, what we want to try and do is increase the speed but do the same motion. While you do this, it might feel like you're going a little bit faster. That's okay. As you come around the bottom of the turn, that's what's going to help manage your speed. So here we go. We're going to do the delay. Watch the snowboarder. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, turn. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, turn. One, 1,000, turn. As you see, my turn shape is a little bit bigger. 
I'm starting to really feel grip right here in the fall line, here in the turn. And I feel a lot more comfortable now committing to that outside ski. And again, all I feel is pure edge here. There's no drift. I feel balanced. I feel stable. I feel like I could keep going forever. At the slower speed, Rachel's score was around that, that 90 range again. However, just by picking up the speed, by changing the turn shape while using this exercise, it then ramped up all of the metrics. On that run, Rachel's score was a 113. That was a huge improvement. Continue to do this as you feel comfortable on steeper or more difficult slopes. When you do this, that delay turn will start to feel a little bit more natural. You'll know you're doing it right when you have that secure sensation at the top of every turn. This last exercise is one of my favorites. It is called the inside ski tap turn. So the tap allows me to take small steps or small commitment levels to bounce on that outside ski. And when we do that, you're gonna feel that the turns is maybe a bit more round, but you're definitely gonna feel more balance and more edge control on the bottom of that turn. What that should do for the metric is improve your, your outside or your balance to the outside ski. It's also really gonna affect the edging. So if I draw a turn, what I wanna try and do is I wanna start tapping that inside ski just as I enter that fall line. It's gonna feel a little precarious, but that's okay. Just realize that it's just small little steps. The terrain that we wanna try this on is again, fairly gentle or moderate terrain. If you look down here, it's fairly gentle. Come with me, let's do a couple of these together. So I'm gonna turn, let's get the one out of the way. As I start to turn, I'm gonna tap, 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 tap. Watch here, I'm gonna enter the turn, tap, tap, tap. What this is gonna allow me to do is really increase my outside ski pressure. By doing this, I'm gonna have that more secure sensation which will really boost up those pressure marks. So on that run, when we watched Rachel there, the IQ dropped quite a bit down to a 78. That's okay, because that outside ski pressure metric was quite high still. That's what's important here. What we want to try and do is creep when we start the tapping, higher up in the turn. That's going to increase even more the pressure metric. So we, we increased the speed a little bit, but we also started tapping that, the inside ski even earlier. By doing that, we took Rachel from a 62 to an 82 on the outside ski. That's amazing. Again, you don't have to worry about the overall IQ. That was a little bit lower than what we want, but we're perfecting one metric at a time. So if we look at the turn, what we were to begin with, we started tapping just after the fall line. We increased or we started to tap much earlier now. And what that's allowing us to do is really balance on that outside ski. If you feel as if, you're having a hard time to pick up that other leg, try bending that outside ski a little bit more. That's gonna allow you to pick up that ski a little easier. Once you have this drill mastered and it feels like you can do it all the time on command, the very next option that we gotta do is put it back into our own skiing. So 
I like to do a first couple turns still doing the exercise, but then as I ski down, I should feel like at any point in time, I can lift up that foot and feel secure on that outside ski. Come with me and watch this. So again, as I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna tap, 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 and then I'm gonna feel like I can pick up that ski. I wanna feel like at any point in time, I could tap that foot. I feel so incredibly balanced on this outside ski. By doing this, you're gonna really improve your skiing and crush those pressure metrics. So what we did on this last lap is we started to combine all of those skills that what we worked in, uh, in one run. What that allowed us to do is to achieve just over 110, which was our goal. When we do these exercises, we use carve, that's your proof, like it's working. And sometimes if it doesn't feel good, it doesn't matter. What really matters is, does it, does it feel different? Are you achieving a good result because of these different sensations? You know, the biggest takeaway from this is, don't be distracted by your overall IQ dropping while you do the exercises. That is completely normal and it's okay to do. The cool thing that you're gonna find is, as you get comfortable and as you acquire that new skill and apply it in the situations of the run that you're on, your IQ will then increase. That is how you know you have acquired that new skill.